Hello friends, welcome back to my Bible prophecy update. I'm on the wrong page. Well actually, let us begin with what I'm reading. I was just preparing my tabs and I have a lot of information to share with you in terms of developments in the Middle East, Europe, and there's a lot of things that I want to share with you. So as you can see, I have tons of tabs opened and I have a couple of videos that I want to share while I present this today. I was just reading this article here, BNN Bloomberg, CA, I believe it's Canadian. Um, I was reading this wording and I just, it, what screamed out to me was Ezekiel 38. Did you know, just a few days ago, on July the 4th, Iran joined the Shanghai Corporation Organization. Let me read this. In fact, it's just a, a short excerpt that I want to read from this article. And mind you, if I can just mention this, as I read these articles, I'm only going to be giving you the headlines because there's a lot to cover and I don't want to bore you with going into so much detail with reading word for word articles. But the ones that I have got together today, I think are important so we can see the bigger picture as to where are we right now in terms of the end times before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. So, as you know, from my previous messages and Bible prophecy, hence reason why I've got so many playlists. If you haven't seen them, please go and check them out, especially the playlist titled Gog and Magog very important playlist regarding prophecy let me read this article so Iran has just joined the SCO another step toward ending its global isolation as it builds warmer ties with Russia and China Iran's membership was announced by India's Prime Minister as he headlined the SCO leader summit held virtually on Tuesday so this would be last week. The meeting was the first time China's president and Russia's president shared a platform since last month's attempt mutiny by Wagner mercenaries. Anyhow, check this out. Ezekiel 38 is what I see here. Iran is gradually emerging from diplomatic isolation. Well, that's what we would expect. Because when we read these scriptures, friends, when we go over them, in Ezekiel 38 for example we've got to envision how this scenario is going to look in our world in reality on the ground geopolitically speaking so there are certain things that are going to have to take place yes Iran is gradually emerging from diplomatic isolation forging a key military alliance with Russia from which it's seeking air defenses restoring diplomatic ties with Saudi Arabia and do you recall the messages I did regarding this hostility that exists between the south and the north Iran and Saudi Arabia and when I go through the scriptures especially in the book of Isaiah we can see that the Lord is going to use this instrument from the north to come against the Hala in the south and I believe this is showing us Iran and Saudi Arabia, although it seems they're restoring diplomatic ties, we know there's a lot of treachery involved. I also read from the book of Obadiah, because the book of Obadiah talks about Esau and Jacob, the enmity between the two brothers and how, oh Lord, there's so much to talk about. I'm so just worked up about you know, I take a little break and I come back and things haven't escalated so much, but they're definitely going in the direction that we talk about on this channel. So they're forging key military alliances with Russia, restoring diplomatic ties with Saudi Arabia and pushing its allies to fire missiles at Israel. It is also enriching more and more uranium, including a small amount almost to weapons grade while denying any plans for making a bomb same old thing nothing changes close that tab i'll come to this channel later before i continue with the news about 
the geopolitical situations, especially Turkey, Israel, Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> Azerbaijan, Armenia, Russia, and all that. Let us not forget the church who is going through immense persecution. Raymond Ibrahim reported a couple of weeks ago the horror of being Christian in Muslim Pakistan, which is my background, my heritage, Pakistani. <clears throat> the way they've written this article in bullet points makes it easier for me to read, so let me just go through these, friends. You know, the persecution in this country is always been terrible. There was absolutely no case. There was no proof against Norman. And none of the witnesses produced by police could corroborate the blasphemy allegation against him. Same old thing. There's these allegations of blasphemy made against Pakistani citizens. And when there's no evidence, the local tribes, the gangs, the zealous bunch, take matters into their own hands. And usually what happens is there's a disagreement between a Muslim and a Christian and the Christian has been wrongly accused of blasphemy within a particular conversation and it gets heated and then things get out of control and then the Christian is usually arrested and imprisoned and the family that are left behind suffering in absolute anguish for their loved one are attacked and then this incident is it spreads in the local community in the villages and it gets out of control and other churches are attacked christians are persecuted and life is a living hell for them this is murder of justice lazar alaraka lawyer of noman masi a 22 year old christian man sentenced to death for blasphemy and mind you these laws are being pushed in the west I spoke about this a couple of years ago. I expect to hear more about blasphemy laws at the United Nations. And in fact, there was a policy that was recognized by the United Nations, thanks to Imran Khan, that has recognized a day in uh, May as Islamophobia Day to tackle Islamophobia. Anyhow, several people have been lynched over false accusations of blasphemy in Pakistan. At least 57 cases of alleged blasphemy were reported in Pakistan between January and May of this year alone. 57 cases. While four blasphemy suspects were lynched or extrajudicially killed during the same period. The blasphemy laws have been consistently misused to settle personal disputes, which is what I was trying to explain. The blasphemy laws have been consistently misused to settle personal disputes, persecute minority groups, and incite mob violence and hatred. We demand prompt action and a collective effort by the government to address these human rights violations. Muslim policemen hired to protect a Catholic school run by the sisters of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary instead attacked the school and murdered two young girls. So Muslim policemen who were hired to protect the Catholic school instead attacked the school and murdered two young girls reported in British Asian Christian Association in May. The incident has, off, has been officially blamed on the mental health of the man without investigating his possible relations with Muslim extremist groups. And so there's no investigation, there's nobody pursuing it because on the, on the claim of mental health, they shut down the case. In yet another incident, a Muslim family with the aid of police beat, tortured and illegally confined a Christian house cleaner Remember, a lot of these servants in Pakistan, house servants, are minorities, Christians, Hindus. Soon after she tried to resign due to pregnancy, when her husband, rickshaw driver, went to police to report her missing, officers arrested him instead. 
Lord have mercy. Asma, the cleaner, reported her illegal confinement and beating to police, but officers dismissed her complaint without even bothering to question her. Angered that she had the temetry to report them, the Muslim family registered a theft charge against Asma and her husband, which police did take very seriously. This is because of the dhimmi status in Islam, and I spoke about this some, some months ago. During the time of the Islamic Caliphate, during the, the very last version, the last final phase of the Islamic Caliphate was the Ottoman Empire. During the Islamic Caliphate, where the Islamic leader governs many states under Islamic jurisprudence, have this legal law which claims anyone who is not Muslim under and living within the Islamic Caliphate are considered dhimmi, which is second class, third class citizens. And there are certain requirements, certain limiting um, lifestyles that they have to abide by. One of those things is treating them with blatantly disrespect, taking the testimony, the witness statements of Muslims and regarding them highly opposed to Christian witness statements. So basically the Christians, the Jews, anyone who's non-Muslim are subdued and under subjection of the Islamic government. This is why since that time all the Islamic nations today, Islamic or Muslim majority nations today, still have residue of the Islamic Caliphate within their legal system, within the community system. It's a part of the culture. So it's still ingrained in the minds of those by tradition or culture. They still adhere to those rules, even though there isn't an Islamic caliphate today. But do you understand what I'm saying? I will put these in the description so you can read them. The persecution of Christians in Pakistan, whether at the hands of judges and police or mobs and rapist gangs, continues to worsen as evidenced by one fully documented month that of may so for your further reading and for your prayer intercessory prayer i will put this in the description when i'm done i hate to move on but there's more persecution news to share our brothers and sisters in nigeria there is a oh lord they're being slaughtered, friends like cattle in Nigeria. Our brothers and sisters. Christians in central Nigeria on the edge after letters threaten attack. So it continues. Over 50,000, I read this article previously, did I not? 50,000 Christians, well we know now the number's gone up a lot higher. When are our churches going to talk about this, friends? Bring it to attention to the awareness of those so they can give and donate. Hundreds of Nigerian Christians killed in recent attacks three weeks ago. At least 450 Christians have died in a series of attacks on Christian villages in three. You know, when I talk about the Islamic beast system and people can't imagine it being a thing, what do you think is happening right now? This is the beast persecuting the saints. This is but to flavor a little glimpse as to how it's going to look on a grand scale. And this is already horrendous for our brothers and sisters already. Who are dealing head on with the beast right now. I don't want to imagine it getting out of control. But I think we need to just envision if such a thing were to happen in the West, in Europe. Lord have mercy. Help us, Lord. 17 hours ago, Nigerian Christians under relentless attack. Attacks on Christian communities in parts of Nigeria are now relentless. Lord have mercy. May the Lord strengthen the saints. Attacks on Christian communities in parts of Nigeria are now relentless as men, women and children are killed and churches are burned. 
He spoke at Holy Trinity on the day of the Christian martyr event last month. The irony, look at that. It was part of Out of the Ashes, a three-month campaign of events in the UK organised by the charity Release International to highlight the suffering of Christians in Nigeria. Well, I applaud Release International. They've been around a long, long time. A charitable organisation that brings the attention of the persecuted church to local churches. But I wish the churches themselves would designate somebody in their office, an ad administrator, to bring updates on the churches on a regular basis. So these charitable organisations won't be the only ones having to do it. Many of the Christians in the north, most of whom belonged to the Church of the Brethren, had been killed or displaced, including at least eight of their pastors, he said, and the denomination had been almost wiped out. Many are traumatised, frightened and living in shock. All those who survived have run for safe haven in cities or in Cameroon. If they have torched one church, they have torched us all. And in the northeast, especially, denominations have been wiped out. Well, we know that their souls are now with the Lord in glory. But you think the Lord is looking down from where he is and just to see where are my people? Why, why are they not crying out for justice? Oh, Lord, there's so much persecution, friends. And we'll put these in the description so you can share with your church, your fellowship, your home groups, your Bible study groups. Turkey in the news. So lately, <clears throat> moving on to this situation between Erdogan and the West is moving towards a scenario where Erdogan is again coming out stronger and he's outsmarting the Western leaders. Who would have thought? I did. <clears throat> Greek leader, another one, held positive climate in Greek-Turkey ties. What do you think he's motivated by? Well, remember, 2023 marks the centennial of the Turkish state after the Ottoman Empire, a hundred years. So he's looking to grow his influence in the region. So he's playing smart, temporarily. Greece and Turkey seek fresh start to bilateral relations, but they were almost on the brink of war. Well, don't hold your breath, friends. I don't think this is gonna be the end of it. Turkey agrees to allow Sweden to join NATO because Turkey is showing interest and bringing it up again that they want to continue with their EU ascension. A lot of the EU nations, the European Union, are not going to let it happen. But it shows that Erdogan is still keen to play this card, the EU card. Why can't we be a player in the EU? Look at our credentials. Look how we have mediated between Russia and Ukraine. The grain crisis, for example. But he's also stabbed in the back Russia again. Let me see if I can bring up an article. Responsible statecraft. Is it this one? Sweden gets NATO. Turkey gets F-16s. In a sudden turn, Erdogan announced Monday that he would support Sweden's bid to join NATO, which is basically stabbing Putin in the back. Remember what I was saying about Erdogan. He's a strategist, an opportunist. He's very cunning. Clearing the path for Stockholm to become the Alliance 32nd member as soon as this year. Biden, usually wary of being close to Erdogan, given his autocratic tendencies, had nothing but praise for the Turkish leader. I want to thank you for your diplomacy and your courage to take that on, Biden said in a joint press availability at the NATO summit. And I want to thank you for your leadership. What is going on here? I believe the West, you know, like I've said before, friends, they're all in on the club. All these leaders that we think are all you know, set out to really help the people and really govern their nations with justice and 
have really good intentions. I'm telling you, I believe they're all in the same club and they strategize together, whether it's the Freemasons or whatever these elitists, whatever group they're associated with, they're all a part of a club and each person has its turn. Every dog has its day. So I believe they all know we're going to have to support the rising of the Caliphate. Meanwhile, we will destroy the West ourselves. We will tear it down, break it down, and um, in disgrace with the LGBT, all this liberal nonsense, the climate change, which is a load of nonsense, madness, yet child human trafficking is si these government leaders are silent on. If you haven't seen it already, I was going to bring up the video. I might do that in another video. The Sound of Freedom. Please go and watch it. I'm all over the place, aren't I, today? Bear with me. Shortly after Erdogan's announcement, announcement, Biden administration said the US will move forward with plans to sell 20 billion worth of the F-16 fighter jets to Turkey. Well, what do you think Greece is going to do? Greece is going to fight for it as well because they know that they are an immediate threat neighbouring Turkey, Greece. Their decisions came after a week in a whirlwind talks within the US and Turkish officials. But there's a reason to believe this saga is not over yet. Exactly, absolutely, no it's not. Turkey's parliament will likely not vote on Swedish accession to NATO until October since the legislative body goes into a long recess after next week. That leaves more than two months for Erdogan to renege on his promise or seek further concessions from the US and other NATO members. very smart former a non-nordic monitor which is an excellent resource for understanding what's really going on in government in turkey abdullah boska is one of the dissidents who manages this turkish intelligence website he's extradited i can't recall what country he's in right now i forget but follow him on twitter as well Former private secretary claimed Erdogan entered into secret agreements with the US and Israeli officials while establishing his party. This is years ago, back in the early 2000s, apparently, allegedly. Look at him there. Could it be possible that they were instigating that he be the man for the next decade, the next two decades, friends? I don't trust our leaders. I trust no government leader, friends. I don't know about you. Trust no man. Apart from the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. In a speech delivered in Parliament Wednesday, the former private secretary and advisor of Erdogan alleged that secret negotiations took place. The re There's a reason why I'm bringing up this article. I'm going to show you why. Secret negotiations took place between Erdogan American officials as well as Israeli agents hmm interesting word Israeli agents before the establishment of his political party in 2002 before claiming that Erdogan's rise in politics was as a result of secret agreements hmm I wonder what secret clubs they're all a part of friends the dude who makes his allegation, who served as Erdogan's private secretary during the process of establishing his party, stated he knew about he knew about all of Erdogan's visits to the US during that period of time and a detailed knowledge of whom had been contacted and the nature of those contacts. Look what he says here. So I was reading this article and these this wording just jumped off the page. During that period, I'm very well aware of the negotiations that took place with the Prince of Darkness. <clears throat> Richard Pearl. And what was achieved in return. Interesting words. If you don't believe me, then go and talk to Mr. Erdogan yourself. Ask him, when AKP was being set up, did you leave everyone accompanying you? and secretly meet with Israeli agents and Richard Pearl in Washington. 
Does anyone know more on this dude, Richard Pearl? Let me know in the comments section. And here's the document of that alleged secret meeting discussion. So these meetings apparently happened. What what for? What was the point? Erdogan's meetings with Pearl and other American officials before becoming Prime Minister were kept secret from the public. Former Erdogan associates who previously shared their accounts with the media revealed that Erdogan, coming from an Islamist and anti-American political background, had conveyed to his counterparts during these meetings that the party intended to establish would not adopt an anti-American stance. Well, he lied, didn't he? Of course. <laughs> Very cunning. Pearl recounted his meeting with Erdogan in mid-2002 during a conference organised by this organisation, a E. I. He described her the one who was then present in the room as Prime Minister to the guests. Wow. Something suspicious happened back in those years, friends. The other one visits to the US before he took office in 2003 are frequently used in conspiracy theories by the ultra-nationalist opposition, suggesting that con contrary to his Islamist image, Erdogan was actually a leader who had a good relationship with Washington. Furthermore, they represent a 2002 White House meeting as evidence to support the allegations. Oh, who to believe, friends? There's a, there's a power struggle that's been going on here for a while. Another interesting piece of news. Here's that guy. Abdullah Bozgurt. Look him up. This is his website. He's a colleague with another couple of other people for critical analysis regarding Turkey, extremism, military, terrorism, intelligence, foreign policy, and what have you. Anyway, look what happened recently. Turkey's secretly arranged visit of North Korean general in charge of ballistic missile program. <laughs> Remember what Pakistan did, friends? Was it in the 70s or 80s when they swore an oath that they were not going to um, they were going to steer clear of nuclear weapons and suddenly they surprised the whole world by testing their nuclear bombs. I believe Turkey is going to do the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if they've not even already started working on a nuclear project. But I've got no evidence. I can't just outlandishly make that allegation. But it's not entirely ridiculous of a statement. What do you think? The Turkish military secretly arranged a visit to Ankara of a North Korean general. Remember, Pakistan obtained their nuclear capabilities through the help of Iran. And they had a relationship going on there. So the secret meeting with the North Korean general who was in charge of developing ballistic missile technology to discuss terms of cooperation and technology transfer according to official documents obtained by Nordic Monitor. He invited me to meet with him and he was Deputy Chief of General Staff. So I went to the General Staff Headquarters. He said there were experiencing shortcomings in the fight against terrorism. So this is what Turkey's mantra has been for the last seven, eight years which is why they've used this excuse to go and invade in Iraq and in Syria, right? <clears throat> They're experiencing shortcomings in the fight against terrorism or facing problems. He asked me if I could explore where we could get weapons and ammunition that would help our troops. I said I would be happy to do it. I was involved in an effort to acquire other things for the Turkish army with a view to transferring technology from abroad. One of them was to bring a major general in charge of the North Korean missile program to Turkey. Gog and Magog alliance makes you wonder how is going to become such a beastly organization. Well, it's not going to just come out of thin air. It's not going to happen overnight, is it? It happens to in our day-to-day -day lives. All these workings are falling in the backdrop, which will result in one day what will be the invasion of the Gog armies. Remember, with Persia, with Libya, they all come together against the South, 
against Israel, the Holy Land, and against the Arab tents in the Arabian Peninsula. All this is all showing me how treacherous these people really are. Turkey and Saudi Arabia, Iran and Saudis, all of these nations in the Abraham Accords with Israel, all pretending that we are going to get along, we're going to have a prosperous future, a safe and secure future. Load of lies, deceit, treachery. I was involved in an effort to acquire other things. Right. Hmm. It did not provide the name of the North Korean general, nor the exact date of the trip or what came out of the secret meetings he had with the Turkish generals. But given the fact that Korkeki was the general staff's number two at the time, it had to have been sometime between 1993-95. Oh my days. <sighs> For interest sake, I share that with you. Sweden, Israel news. Not only is the Quran being burnt in Sweden, they're now burning the Torah, which is the Bible. The Holy Word of God. <clears throat> These people in Sweden, I'm telling you, bonkers. Because you know what happens here with this stupid behaviour? And I, I don't agree with it. I don't. I don't, absolutely don't. I agree with Paul, how Paul behaved in the book of Acts. I'm in line with Paul. In fact, I brought up the scripture just so I can share it with you to explain why. In the book of Acts, you know, nowhere, not one incident will you be able to find in the book of Acts that the believers were disrespectful to the other peoples and their idols. In fact, they were very engaging, I would say provocative, absolutely, but they were never insulting them. Not one time will you find it. Let me read here because it does nothing. What happens? The churches are attacked. Innocent Christians in these countries are attacked. For example, in Pakistan, those Christians who are already having a hard time are attacked severely because of what happened in Sweden. And most of these people who do this are atheists who are anti-religion. In the book of Acts, I'm going to make sure I read this. Hold on, just bear with me. I went through this some time, a couple of years ago, when I was doing an expose on Speaker's Corner in London, anyway. The writer Ephesus, note, this is in Turkey. Right? Look what happens here, friends. When these things were accomplished, Paul had purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Arche to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there rose a great commotion about the way. And the people in Ephesus at this time remind me and have a lot of resemblance to Muslims today. Those radical extreme zealots who go around chanting death threats to those who would insult Islam or Muhammad. Read these words and notice the same spirit. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, which is like, I did a whole video on this as well, showing you the similarities between Diana the Great, the goddess, and Allah in Kaaba. The black stone, the same deities, just different names, different places, different flavours. And notice not only are there a lot of similarities in the deities, there's so much similarity in the behaviour of those zealots who worship these idols. So this Demetrius makes silver shrines of Diana and he's finding that his livelihood is under threat brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people. And it was through persuasion 
diplomatic, through love, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Paul was setting the world on fire. <laughs> not, he wasn't going around insulting people. You're not going to win anyone over like that. This Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Today, it's the Kaaba in Mecca. If you check out the videos, the worldwide pilgrims that go there to worship, you'll realise what a gr great, blasphemous, idolatrous system this is. Now, when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So instead of saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians, today it's Allahu Akbar, which is Allah is greater. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theatre with one accord. So he ramped up the crowds, really got them worked up. Having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions, and when Paul wanted to go into the people, so they got hold of them, friends, they seized them. But when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him because they were terrified and were fe fearing for Paul's life. Then some of the officials of Asia, who were his friends, sent to him pleading that he would not venture into the theatre. Some therefore cried one thing and some another. For the assembly was confused and most of them did not know why they had come together. And that usually what happens in this heated, um, volatile event. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wanted to make his defense to the people. But when they found out that he was a Jew, that's all it took. All with one voice cried out for about two hours. Two hours. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. It's just like the chants of Allahu Akbar that you hear today. And when the city clerk had quieted the crowd, so notice the city person official, he calms the crowd and he says, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know? That the city of the Ephesians is temple guardian of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Zeus which is again similar to the black stone in Garba because it's alleged that that was once a meteorite fell down from heaven and Abraham and Ishmael got it together and built Garba it's a lot of fairy tales since Therefore, these things cannot be denied. You ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. He's trying to calm them down. For you have brought these men here. Notice, city official, calming the crowds, and very diplomatically, using a lot of logic and reason, says, You brought these men here who are neither robbers, so your idols are not under threat. Neither robbers of temples, nor blasphemers of your goddess. So Paul and his companions were known, even by the official of Ephesus, the city clerk, that these people are just preaching. They're not actually blaspheming our idols. They were known for that. That's why I say these burning of books is nonsensical, is stupid. You don't win this argument hate with hate. That's not the ways of the Christians. But you know the Christians are caught in the thickets and now they're going to be punished for no reason, no fault of their own. I just wanted to make that clear. Israel protests as Sweden allows Torah burning outside the embassy on Saturday, five hours ago. Stockholm approves public Torah burning in front of Israeli embassy. Are Christians going to be silent? This is the Bible we're talking about, the Holy Bible. You know, Christians are the most tolerant in society and I think that's a big mistake. Big mistake. 
Swedish police authorise protest by a man who plans to burn the Torah. Bible outside. <clears throat> so first it was the Quran. Now they're going to attack the, uh, the Torah, the Bible. So this is obviously a person, like I said, who's an atheist, someone who hates God. You see how dangerous this can get. If you encourage one to say what's freedom of speech, freedom of whatever, then you've got to allow that rule for Christians as well. Can we allow the Bible to be burned? What, what nonsense is this? Israel protests as Sweden allows Torah burning outside embassy on Saturday. President, chief rabbis and others call on Stockholm to stop destruction of sacred works after Stockholm police OK request for freedom of speech. This sets a precedence, right, for them to do it elsewhere. Something like this will happen elsewhere. Salwan Momika holds the Quran as he protests outside a mosque in Stockholm. Look at the attention he's getting. Israeli officials protested to Sweden on Friday after local police gave the go-ahead to request to allow the burning of a Bible outside of the Israeli embassy. What a... so blasphemous, friends. Local police two weeks ago said they had received an application. They received an app. Look at this. The process. Oh, it was not immediately clear if the person planned to burn a copy of the Bible or a Torah scroll. In a symbolic gathering for the sake of freedom of speech, which is another religious ideolo ideology that people are willing to die for, which is ridiculous. Other ones in NATO moves agitate Russia, but don't spell Turkey sharp shift to the West. I said this before in my older videos, when I was doing videos on Turkey, Russia, Ukraine, the other one is coming out stronger and Russia is weakened. Russia is in a very difficult position. Erdogan's U-turn on Sweden's accession to NATO during the Alliance Summit has prompted a flurry of Western commentary on how Turkey may be pivoting away from Russia. It's not. It's being very strategic. An opportunist. Ru Turkey is not going to pivot away from Russia. It's possible, and I said this some time ago, there could be conflict between Turkey and Russia because they've got unresolved differences back in history past in fact, before the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, there was a war between the Russians and the Turks. So this unresolved enmity, hidden, although under the radar, maybe, but it's unresolved. If this is a power play, Turkey is going to eventually really provoke Russia further. Russia is being very patient. Russia doesn't have a choice. You see the position that they're in right now. <clears throat> How Turkey may be pivoting away from Russia and returning to the Western fold. He wants to play both sides while he's building up the Caspian. How long can Russia, President, special relationship with Erdogan last? Russia's war might have new casualty. The Putin Erdogan bond, not everyone agrees. The Kremlin would certainly not have been too pleased with the images of Erdogan and President Joe Biden all smiles during their more than an hour long meeting. Biden held the Turkish leader for his courage, leadership and diplomacy. They're setting Erdogan up on the platform for a reason. After Erdogan said he would tell the Turkish parliament to ratify Sweden's membership. Biden even posted a video on his official Twitter feed singing the Turkish strongman's praises Erdogan called Biden a dear friend. Oh my goodness, somebody passed the bucket. France 24 reported a couple of days ago. The Israelis set for new Jewish temple on Al-Aqsa site. And this is a part of all this religious right-wing fervor that is spreading amongst a small community of the religious orthodox in Israel because they, they want to get this thing built friends <clears throat> they want to go back to their roots they're coming to the conclusion well we are Israeli Jews where's our holy temple we have the right to rebuild we should rebuild right 
So according to them, they're doing what they think is right according to their beliefs, according to the Torah, or according to the, the Talmud, whatever it is that they believe in, which is going to cause a fire in the region. With imported sacrificial cows, ancient hymns and growing support, growing support, some nationalist Jews hope to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem's holy city at a site at the heart of the Israeli-Palestinian tensions. Hmm. This is why I was suggesting, is it that channel? Where's it gone? Follow this channel, Israel guys, for the latest in Israel, in Jerusalem, because they're based in Israel. And what do they say on their about page? In a world of G-hated and anti-Israel propaganda, we believe you should have a direct connection to the land and the people of Israel. So check them out, friends and see what the latest updates are on their channel let me just go and see what the latest are three hours ago Zelensky is fears that Israel refuses to support Ukraine Lebanon might be preparing to declare war on Israel Joe Biden is trying to stop Israel from going off the rails Israel's government is trying to save the Palestinian government well some crazy news links here the BBC was forced to apologize for this the BBC have lost all credibility with me, so please don't send me any news articles regarding the BBC. Okay. Where's that article? Where was I? Okay, so... Members of the Orthodox Jewish group claim to be descendants of the Biblical tribe of Levi the priesthood, the priestly tribe, which performed hymns and music at the holy site. When the temple will be rebuilt, we will ask the Levites to come sing, but they won't know. They have to learn. So they've got the reasons why they want to rebuild. The faithful have their sites set on the large tree-dotted compound in the heart of Jerusalem's old city. Known as the Temple Mount to Jews and revered as the holiest site, the compound has for centuries housed Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third most sacred place in Islam. For centuries, why? Because during the Islamic Caliphate, hello, after the Roman Empire, Islam came and moved in, took over real estate, and it has left its real estate mark ever since. So in the Islamic mindset, it still belongs to the Caliphate. It's just the leader is absent, but when he returns, he'll fix things, i.e. the Mahdi, i.e. the Islamic Jesus. Because remember, if you're new to my videos, Muslims believe Jesus is returning as a prophet to disprove to the Christians that he was not the son of God, that he didn't die on the cross and he wasn't resurrected. And he's coming to kill the swine and to break the cross. So... In this Muslim Islamic eschatological mindset, the future belongs to Islam in their worldview, in their religious worldview. So they're not going to let go of Jerusalem's old city without a fight. Those seeking to rebuild the temple recall the former place of worship destroyed around 70 AD during the Roman period. And then after that came the Islamic period. Those seeking to rebuild the temple recall the former place of worship. Okay. According to Jewish tradition, the first temple was demolished 586 BC. And they want to replace it. They want to rebuild. For Hayim, a 50-year-old third temple advocate, you can say whatever you want about the Muslim presence. This was the place for Jews. Jewish worship at the future temple is only a matter of time. They believe this organization called Building Israel, which according to its website, works at bringing the redemption closer. And if you take a look at reality, and this photo is the reality, how is that going to happen, friends? I mentioned in previous videos, I believe that there is a way that they're going to get this done and by way of help from Saudi Arabia, not necessarily Jordan. Although Jordan could be at the negotiating talks with Israel in the future, 
I believe Saudi Arabia will be the key player in order to have the Jews appeased and the Muslims appeased. Somehow, we know it's going to happen, yes? According to the book of Daniel, there will be sacrifices and there will be um, an ending to those sacrifices. Now, what did I have here? I'm moving along as quick as I can. Anyway, I wanted to talk about this, but I wanted to show you an example of why Russia's Putin is rightly, rightly so, really shocked and disgusted at what Turkey's just done, backstabbed them. Because Erdogan agreed to keep these soldiers until the end of the war. But he just went on his promise, he went back on his promise. Ukraine Zelensky brings home Azovstal, the Nazi dudes, Nazi is proven. So when I was out there on videos months ago, since this war started, when I said they're Nazis in these Ukrainian battalions, people thought I was crazy. Well, it's proven now, isn't it? He's released them back to Ukraine. Russia denounces the soldiers' return, accusing Kiev and Ankara of violating a prisoner exchange deal under which the men were to remain in Turkey until the end of the war. I don't even want to look at them. The atrocities that those men have carried out. I don't even want to see their faces. So another reason why Putin needs to be very weary of Erdogan. Abraham Accord, Saudi Arabia, Israel. What's going on between Saudi Arabia and Israel? Well, Saudi Arabia is going to be very, very cautious with Israel. This is why I think because of these religious zealot riots that are taking place in Israel right now, <clears throat> Saudi Arabia has to be particularly careful because they want to come to normalizing peace with Israel, dealing with the status quo, doing something about East Jerusalem, the Palestinian situation, and just basically declaring that they're going to be signatory to the Abraham Accords, which I still believe it might happen. And it's going to be big news, big. I've been waiting for that to happen for some time, but there's a lot to clear. There's a lot of mess, a lot of details in the way. It's not going to happen anytime soon, these people are saying, but I don't know. Saudi normalization, Israeli-Palestinian relations, focus of Abraham Accords hearing. Keep your eyes peeled on this situation. So, European Union and Turkey. Will Turkey become a member of the EU? Do you think it's impossible? I don't think it's impossible. Is it probable? Well, there's going to have to be a way of convincing the other EU members that it's going to be a good idea. If Erdogan is able to influence and convince his EU counterparts that he will be good and bring good to the EU, and if the EU says, okay, we'll do it, that is the end of the West. It's going to be game over. Keep your eyes peeled to do that, friends. This, you know, every time I see news about the EU and Turkey, it always reminds me of years ago, years ago, 2004, 2003, 2004, <clears throat> when I was seeking the Lord on the end times prophecy, not long after I was saved, friends, because I was watching Christian TV and everybody was talking about the revival of the Roman Empire and I couldn't see it in the Bible. I was like, Lord, this doesn't make sense. Show me what I'm missing. I did a prayer and a fast for three days. On the third day, the Lord gave me the word Turkey. I was sitting on my sofa, the Bible on my left arm rest, a pen in my right hand. And I was like, Lord, and I just closed my eyes and just asked him, show me, Lord. And bam, the word Turkey. Out of no, I was not even thinking about Turkey. Turkey was nowhere in my thoughts. And soon after that, I thought, Turkey, the Ottoman Empire. And then that was it. That was it for me. Ever since those days, I've been studying the word, doing my research, and lo and behold, what do I discover? Everything that the Lord has been showing me since then has all come to pass. 
praise the Lord for revelation because that came to me by revelation which is why it's a very good idea to pray and fast when you're seeking the Lord so will this be a thing Lord have mercy <clears throat> I don't want to make any sort of I don't want to speculate on it all I know is what the Lord showed me and by him showing me Turkey he was showing me I'm looking at the wrong place Italy Rome is the wrong place is Turkey we ought to be looking at so whether that means the Lord was showing me Turkey will be part of the EU and Turkey is a threat and the beast and the wounded head that is going to be healed or whether Turkey is just simply the leader that is going to form the last days coalition against Israel. Muslim nations demand action after Islamophobic Quran burning. Well, this is coincidence, isn't it? Because remember, the United Nations, like I said, had this law, a day to combat Islamophobia. So it's already starting. So these people who start these fires of these books, they're only helping to fan the flames, pardon the pun, to getting that a little closer towards the end. United Nations, this is what I'm talking about. The UN observes first International Day Against Islamophobia and it happened this year because it was passed by legislation last year. And this was the first year it was actually commemorated. The observation follows unanimous adoption of an assembly resolution last year that proclaimed 15th of March as the International Day calling for global dialogue that promotes tolerance, peace, respect for human rights, religious diversity. So they've convinced the United Nations that there is an Islamophobic epidemic. Not a persecution of Christians epidemic, but there's a, or the child trafficking epidemic, no. But there's an epidemic of Islamophobia. Did you know that, friends? Well, you know now, don't you? The high-level event was co-convened in Pakistan, whose foreign minister, Bilawal Zardari, underlined that Islam is a religion of peace. And, oh my goodness, the more you repeat a lie, the more people begin to believe it. This is the oh, the foolishness, the gullibility, the naivety of the West because we read these words and we're like well that perfectly describes my next door neighbour who are Muslim so I absolutely agree but yet, let me go back <clears throat> but this is not talked about what contradiction the horror of being Christian in Muslim Pakistan why is this even a title? why the blasphemy laws the irony look at the hypocrisy their own blasphemy laws have been consistently misused to settle personal disputes persecute minority groups incite mob violence and hatred they literally murder they murder people they murder Christians because of their blasphemy laws <clears throat> but no we are to respect them so this is all coming I warned you it was going to come Praise the Lord, I was on point accurate about that as well. I'm not bragging, I'm just showing you. When the Lord is showing me, I've got to tell you before it happens. I don't know the purpose of it. I guess it's for know-how, inside knowledge. I don't know. It's certainly not to brag. It's to show me that the Lord God in whom I trust, he is righteous, he is worthy, he knows the end from the beginning, and my faith in him is just stronger and sharper every day although Islamophobia is not new he said it is sad reality of our times no the persecution of Christians in Islamic majority nations is a sad um, a sad heartbreaking reality of our times because in this modern age such barbarity is permitted to continue in this modern age of enlightenment why the hypocrisy why the irony that is only increasing and spreading. Swap this around with the Christian persecution of Christians. It's actually Christianity 
that is a religion of peace, tolerance and pluralism. They've just swept and flipped it on its head. Since the tragedy of 9-11, animosity, which I think is another reason why they instigated it, you see, because it furthers the agenda of Islam. This didn't destroy Islam, it promoted it. More people converted to Islam during this time, did you know that? Stockholm Syndrome. Oh Lord, help your people to understand. Since the tragic 9-11, animosity, institutional suspicion of Muslims, and a lot of people are like, well, yeah, I know, just to cause a lot more problems, whoever instigated it, which I believe is an inside job of the US, working in collaboration with, guess who? Not Israel, but Saudi Arabia. There, I said it. Inside job with the Saudis. That's what that was. A narrative has been developed and peddled with associates, Muslim communities and their religion with violence and danger. Oh my, my, my. Now, if this is happening, then that's wrong. Yeah, they shouldn't be attacked. That's absolutely wrong. Of course it is. Mob violence, attacking another religious man, period, anybody, is wrong. But it's not an epidemic. It's certainly not worthy or being warranted acknowledgement at the United Nations. But you know, the thing is, we're, the Christians don't do anything in order to get our brothers and sisters in Pakistan <clears throat> or in Nigeria that their cries be heard at the UN. Where is the movement? To have a day of solidarity to stand with the persecuted Christians. Where is it? Because we have no power, friends. I'm sorry to say this. So many Christian organisations, they all talk, but no power. But yet you've got these people who have a lot of bark in their bite. The beast system knows how to manipulate friends. This is what's happening here. This Islamophobic narrative is not just confined to extremist marginal propaganda, but regrettably has found acceptance by sections of mainstream media, academia. So now the controlling of information or disinformation laws are going to be now very careful about what you say about this system. Remember, I talk about Islam as a system. I'm not talking about Muslims. Everyone has a role. So they're going to continue to promote it. Rooted in xenophobia. All of us carry a responsibility to challenge Islamophobia or any similar phenomenon because they want this also to be considered worthy of recognition as worthy as anti-Semitism. When people don't put up with anti-Semitism, people ought not to and speak up for Islamophobia, Islamophobic attacks. Anyway, I had these news things that I wanted to share with you. I've talked so long. How long have I been on it? organization of turkey states is to create its own investment fund this is huge development friends huge i'm gonna have to save this i'm gonna save the rest of the videos i'm gonna share i had a video from armageddon news that i wanted to share with you which i thought was very important in fact let me share this news clip i have to let me share it because it will be too late then i'm going to share this news clip and i'm going to save a lot more of what I want to say about the organization of Turkic states, the member states of the Economic Corporation Organization, and the Islamic coin. It's all yet to come up in my next video. Let me give you this breaking news about the Turkic organization Hello of Turkic states. Back in March, leaders from the Organization of Turkic States signed an agreement to set up an investment fund to further integrate the Turkic-speaking world. Although starting with a modest amount of $500 million, the OTS says the fund will create more strategic autonomy for member states. Once established, the fund will focus on supporting small and medium-sized businesses to help spur job growth and innovation. 
The fund will also focus on supporting critical industries, including agriculture, transport, technology, tourism and energy. The OTS, which comprises Turkey and several former Soviet states across the Caucasus and Central Asia, is home to vast reserves of both natural gas, oil and other crucial minerals. And just this past Friday, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan met with the Secretary General of the OTS in Ankara. The two discussed enhancing trade and investment across the Turkic world and preparing for the next OTS summit, which will take place in Kazakhstan later this year. Everything. We're all on track, friends, for the end times. Everything that we've been talking about here on this channel, we're all on track. Everything is going according to the plan of God. In order for a system of the beast, of the confederation of ten nations, they need to have certain logistics, resources, currency, law, legislation, jurisprudence, military power, military might, influence in place, yes? So we've been watching it develop. We don't know the name, the face, the ten kings yet, but it's only a matter of time, friends only a matter of time and i've been showing you the development of these things ever since and to further discuss the turkic investment fund joining me now from brussels is samuel doveri vesterby he is the managing director of the european neighborhood council and from prague bruce panier is a central asia analyst just Gentlemen, listen welcome to, to what Street these guys Park. say good to have you on the program samuel uh, the turkic investment fund is the first joint financial organization of the Turkic states, what's its significance and what does this tell us about the uh, shape of intergovernmental relations in the region? Well, I think it's significant uh, primarily because it's the first time in history that all of the Turkic uh, cultural and Turkic speaking countries come together in such an institutionalized fashion to develop um, an investment fund worth this amount uh, in order to tackle quite specific uh, needs in areas uh, really as diverse as agriculture, tourism and industry, uh, infrastructure and so forth. So I think that's already a very, very um, important concrete step which is being taken uh, by this fund under the Organization of Turkic States. So, Bruce, how do you think this fund will uh, contribute to the development of economic ties across the Turkic world? I mean, how would it cater to the needs of our member states? Well, certainly it builds partnerships among the states, uh, you know, in, in both on bilateral, uh, multilateral basis. So this is good for cooperation between the countries. You know, they're trying to carve out the middle corridor and make it a little bit uh, more open so that it can replace some of the northern corridor that's been shut down by, by Russia. So it, the timing is fantastic for a project like this. And the fact that they can add this component of, of financial assistance between the, among the states, uh, you know, frees them up from uh, some of the pressures and, and complications they had with, with uh, larger international organizations. Uh, you know, certainly, as I mentioned, it, it makes them, brings them closer together. Uh, in that way, and it helps helps them create what I what I think Erdogan always wanted in the first place was was kind of a regional block that has international uh, stature, <clears throat> which is what Erdogan always wanted was to create a regional block that has credibility and stature. Is that what he said? Which is exactly what we've been talking about on this channel, friends. <sighs> when the Lord. In the book of Revelation, I need to do a Bible study, a full in-depth Bible study. So we are refreshed, biblically speaking, in terms of Bible prophecy, according to the scriptures. So we don't get overwhelmed with all this information, right? I have to do another, I need to do another Bible study, friends. I need to do another Bible study. Remember that Jesus Christ, because we read these scriptures and we think, well, we're probably really way off because the world seems to be relatively peaceful right now. You know, the season of normalization, everyone's becoming friends. What's going on? Apart from Russia, of course, bogged down in Ukraine. What's happening? It's going to be so bad that the Lord Jesus comes in military 
attire. Christ on a white horse. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he who sat in it was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. This is the perspective of the Bible. All these leaders, these political initiatives, whatever, they think they're cunning, they can outsmart the Lord. Wow, they're in for a rude awakening. In righteousness, our king will judge and make war. He's coming to set the record straight. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns because he's the king of kings. When the beast and the ten horns are given crowns to rule and reign with the Antichrist for one hour to reign as beasts with him, Jesus is saying he is king. He has many crowns. <laughs> He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, thank goodness for the armies in heaven. Praise the Lord, the armies in heaven are going to come with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Holiness, purity, perfect righteousness and justice now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations the nations are in big trouble and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron <laughs> praise the lord he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god wow Some people read this and say, wow, Jesus is very, is, is the Lord, is this scripture over exaggerated? I think this is like, well, maybe we should calm down a little bit. It, it can't be that bad. Is there really any need for this anger, this wrath? Absolutely. We haven't got a clue what's coming on the earth. The wickedness would be so great. The dragon's wrath against the saints and the woman, her offspring, is going to be so terrible, that tribulation period, that the prayers of the saints, their cries for mercy, for judgment, for deliverance, is why the Lord comes to save the day, our knight in shining armour. And he himself, let it be known to all the world's rulers, that the one whom you despise and the one that you blaspheme day in, day out on your social media, in your written materials, on your broadcasts everywhere, blaspheming the name of Christ, the name of God, you're going to face him on judgment day. The very one that you hate. He himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Not Isa, the prophet of islamic version this is jesus christ the risen lord he's risen because he was resurrected and he was resurrected because he died on the cross and after three days he rose in all his glory that jesus he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god he comes with all the office of almighty god to make judgment King of kings and Lord of lords, and he would deal with the beast and its armies, friends. You'll have to wait for my Bible study with prophecy news update next Friday. Let's see if we can keep this flow. Tuesdays I will continue with my series on the book of Romans because it is important for us believers to get grounded in our faith, to get grounded solid. So we can stand steadfast and be prepared for the days ahead. It's, we've got to strike a balance. Both are important. Both of it is important. And more focus on Israel and what is going to happen regarding this current situation with the riots. Let me finish the reading of this scripture and I will end the stream. Read with me, friends. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven what a marvelous spectacle this will be my goodness 
Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, of captains, of mighty men, of horses and of those that sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him. These armies gathered together against Christ Jesus are the armies that are going to be formed from the Islamic world. Let you be aware. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet. Jesus is just simply going to capture them. <laughs> who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Just like that, the Lord is going to lay hold and chuck him in the fire. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Hallelujah, for the word of God is true. <clears throat> Remember, friends, to keep your prayers on the persecuted church to pray for our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, Nigeria all over the world wherever they are being persecuted friends and keep them in your hearts intercession I'll be back again soon I love you the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all <laughs>